Okay, guys, let's continue with our next lecture, and this is going to be focusing on sickle cell disease, specifically sickle cell anemia. Now, there are uh, minor or less, excuse me, there, there are other types of sickle cell disease, but for this lecture, we will focus on sickle cell anemia since, again, it is uh, the most severe form of all sickle cell diseases, okay? Now, let's go back just a little bit, and earlier I used an example or in previous lectures, I used an example of a red blood cell and what it's supposed to look like. So again, let's use that balloon, that same balloon, uh, to give you a quick illustration of what a red blood cell is supposed to look like. So if I were to squish this balloon down, now you have a what a red blood cell would essentially look like. Okay. Now, if you can see here, just like this balloon, red blood cells have the ability to change shape. So, why is this important? This is extremely important. Well, first of all, let's, let's take that a step even further. What is inside of this balloon here? And air. Well, in your red blood cells, what would be inside your red blood cells would be oxygen. Remember that all of your cells in your body require oxygen and it is shaped for this reason so that oxygen can bind and drop off oxygen to whatever cells need it. Shape again is very important. Now let's move on. Now in sickle cell anemia these red blood cells do not have that shape. You can picture it, picture your red blood cell having somewhat of a banana shape, okay? Now again, I told you that it is important for red blood cells to have that shape for the specific reason that red blood cells must go through vessels called capillaries. Let's pretend that I've magnified a capillary and this is one capillary here. Now remember that red blood cells will enter the capillary one cell at a time. So just picture this cell going in and another one coming in. But this is in this is in a normal person, somebody that does not have sickle cell disease. So you have again cells going in. But in a person with sickle cell anemia, sickle cell disease, their cells will change from that circular shape to something like this, like a cashew, like a banana, okay? And this was termed sickling. Now if this gets in here, because of its odd shape, this can cause an occlusion. It can't go through easily. Or when it's coming in, it might kink in, and boom, everything from behind here is stopped. Now what happens when blood is stopped? Well a scab forms or a clot forms. So what will end up happening is anything after this will receive no oxygen. Now that is very important. Also this is not shaped appropriately which can result in damage to organs, damage to tissues. A couple of the organs will, that will be damaged will be something like the spleen and the kidneys. So a lot of patients with sickle cell anemia end up having um, um, kid, their, their spleen will actually shrink from the continuous scarring caused by these sickled cells. Okay, So these will enter the spleen and the spleen has to deal with it, has to gobble them all up, eat them all up, but because of this odd shape the spleen ends up being damaged, being scarred, and over time it will get smaller and smaller. Now, the same holds true for your kidneys. When these go in, they will damage your kidneys, your glomeruli, your nephrons. And if those are injured, then what ends up happening to the kidney is, is its function ceases. And then you run into some other problems down the road because your kidneys can no longer filter your blood like they're supposed to. So again, these sickling episodes cause a lot of damage. And another thing that will happen because of the, this odd shape of the cell is it will, they will cause a lot of pain. So typically a lot of patients that come in 
um, will be in severe pain again because these one of the reasons that they that they cause the pain is one no oxygen can get through two this damages vessels again it's going to your kidney it's going to damage your kidney so you'll have flank or back pain okay and another another thing you have to be aware of is if this blood clots if this blood clot gets loose and becomes an emboli where can this go off and and head to one of the places that it can go to is your lungs causing chest pain if it goes to your heart well now you have a problem because now you can have a myocardial infarction if that same blood clot goes keeps continuing to move this this emboli continues to move and ends up in your brain well now you have a stroke so now we see why this odd shape this this odd shape of the cell can cause a lot of problems typically when your patients come in again they will be in a lot of pain so your main focus at that time will be to provide some type of pain relief either by PCA continuous uh, pain medication infusion IV route and the other thing that you will want to do is um, increase your fluids now what causes this sickling to occur in patients um, with sickle cell anemia anything can really trigger this sickling episode either uh, low oxygen saturation dehydration stress infection fever again either physical or emotional stress can cause this to occur if they've been traveling and there's been a change in altitude if, there's ha if there has been any change in the amount of oxygen in the air and again they're oxygen status drops it can cause this to happen so one of the things that you will want to do immediately is put them on some type of oxygen therapy to prevent other cells to become sickling or to to begin sickling another thing again will be to hydrate the patient if they're dehydrated what you want to hook them up to IV fluids and again prevent this from occurring the other thing again will be to Give them pain medicine okay so this is sickle cell anemia and for the details please refer to your textbook again this is a quick brief summary just to get you prepared for your exam in case you're missing anything now <clears throat> again quickly Sickle cell anemia, why is this being caused or why? What triggers this to happen? Again, stress, decreased oxygen, uh, infection, fevers. Talked about it again or before. Physical and emotional stress can cause this. So what do you do for your patient? You give them IV fluids, whatever it was prescribed by the physician, to hook them up to some oxygen, re-oxygenate them if they're oxygen saturation levels are low and again you want to put them on some type of oxygen treatment the other thing would be to provide pain relief again remember that everything that is being occluded by these cells is going to be without oxygen that will cause pain whether it's pain to the kidneys flank pain pain to the chest due to clots being in the lungs or in the heart which would then again lead to something like a myocardial infarction or if it goes off into the brain causing a stroke so again please with these patients be very 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 aware that this can cause a lot of pain so typically you'd want to put them on something like a pca pump to treat that pain immediately okay again for future uh, excuse me again for questions comments please write them below feel free to send me an email other than that if you have any more topics that you would like for me to discuss, please let me know and I'd be more than happy to help out. Thank you.